Disruption Network three-year anniversary party at the Blue Community Twenty-three thousand Street in Utica, New York. Physical acts include Annie in the Water, acoustic performance by Haley James, Franklin Jackson, and Live Noah. Haley in the Water will cap off the night. Covered Fleetwood Mac's hit album Rumi. The whole disruption crew will be on hand and will be presenting our annual B Awards. Party kicks off at six p.m. There will be beer, rock, food from Joe Boy's Barbecue, and only for gold with some incredible live music. Come celebrate three years of the G. February the tickets. Visit our website, disruptionnetwork.net. Coming at you live from the Disruption Network Studios in downtown Utica, this is Agent Paranormal. Happy Sunday, everyone. How's it going? My name is Rich. I'm your co-host tonight for this awesome paranormal show. This is your mom's favorite paranormal show, by the way. <laughs> did you know that, Chris? I did not know that. Well, Chris knows it now. Did you know that, Peter? No, I did not. Well, you know it now. Kevin? I asked around, but yeah. You see, you always got to throw a wrench in the works, don't you? You can't just go along. Nope. You can't go along. So congratulations to the Kansas City Chiefs on your win. I'm not a Chiefs fan, but hey, congratulations. So welcome, welcome to the very first Agent Paranormal show tonight. And I've got three investigators and good friends with me here tonight. And we are going to talk about all things paranormal. So for our first episode, I want to talk a little bit about spirit communication. That's one of the topics that's asked about us quite often. And we do a lot of it when we do our investigations. So first of all, let me tell you a little bit about us. How's that? This way we can become old friends like Leonard, Peter, and I are. Oops. Very old. Very old Centuries friends. Centuries old. Oh, that's, that's not good. Is that creepy? That's, that's kind of stuff we don't want to talk to when we do our investigations. So We're timeless. <laughs> <laughs> so Agent Paranormal is based in the Utica, Rome area. We're a paranormal group of like-minded people. Uh, we're searching for the truth when it comes to the paranormal, but we're very open to looking at things of the metaphysical world as well as the technical world and also studying the the work of many paracelebs if you will like zach bagans john zaffis chris moon and others you mean we're not celebrities and no no my mom says i'm a celebrity not even local celebrity <laughs> no not yet no so if you walked into say a coffee shop and asked for latte that's a the thing they'd still make you pay I would get the senior citizen discount, but you would still have to pay a full price. I would just stare at him with the lazy eye until something <laughs> happens. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So without further ado, let's introduce some people. Here are my peeps I've got with me. Unfortunately, I only have three with me tonight. Some of the other ones are either sick or they've got some duties they have to take care of. He said duty. <laughs> duty. Yes. He said duty. <laughs> You're going to sense this theme of poop along the way somewhere is when we ever had Peter Leonard in the show. So... Um, so actually, we cannot call him Peter Leonard or Leonard Peter. Oh. It's Reverend Peter Leonard. Dr. P on the D? That's you. You're on the D. <laughs> I don't have my reverend card yet, so you have to hold off on the marriage right now. So when I get married for the third time, you will officiate at my wedding? Yeah, I won't even charge you. Oh, sweet. <laughs> So I got that going for me. So anyways, let's talk about Pete a little bit. So you had your first paranormal encounter at the age of seven. 
And I remember you telling this story, I mean, because I've heard it like a thousand times during lectures, but I'm sorry. <laughs> a, a revolutionary war soldier walked through your bedroom. I remember you telling me that. Um, you've advanced from there. Obviously, you got into the paranormal field based on experiences that you had when you were younger. You are now what I would call a seasoned investigator, lecturer, and of course, as you're going to find out tonight, an entertainer. So Peter has traveled the U.S. with his pursuits of looking for answers like many of us have. And he is actually, come to think of it, he is the only celebrity that is in this room. So there's a little show on Sci-Fi Channel. So burn. Burn. <laughs> called Haunted Collector with a good friend of ours, John Zaffis. And Peter was on the Halbert House episode. Pete, how long were you on the episode? 33 seconds. There you go. <laughs> And he even has hours of filming, 33 <laughs> seconds. He even has a SAG card. <laughs> I applied. You have to have five minutes. Yep. Five uh, minutes. Oh, dude, really? Well, that sucks. You can't add time with reruns? Every oh, rerun gives you 33 more seconds? I, I asked if the actual filming time counted, but no. No. Sorry about had that. Had they dude. put me back in when they called me back to refilm that other part, I would have had the five minutes. Is the oh. antique expert, but no, let's keep no. him as the history guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what you wanted to be known as. So it was a great privilege to be on the show. And we're very, very proud of Peter. And uh, John Zaffis, I know, was pretty impressed. So thank you. Let's move on to our other co host. He's sitting behind the station controlling everything here. So if something gets screwed up, folks, please blame Kevin. It wasn't me. I swear to God. Was the noise we just heard or. Oh, the control's screwing up. Uh, I think the noise was Peter. I, I did have a healthy dinner before I came here. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Kevin actually um, is a little bit uh, different. He, he actually started when he was like 14. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little different. I was trying to be nice about this whole thing. So <laughs> he actually had his first paranormal experience when you were, what, 14? Well, actually, uh, my first paranormal experience that I remember was around 14. Uh, there was another one that was kind of relayed to me when I was four years old. Apparently something had happened to me as well. That's another story for another time. Uh, that'll be episode number two. How's that? <laughs> so Kevin also founded his own paranormal group called uh, Andorondic Paranormal Society, yep. which I think is like the coolest, coolest paranormal name. Like Saranac is like a cool name for a beer. Andorondic Paranormal Society. Come on. I mean, we live right outside the Andorondic Mountain Range. Apes. So. <laughs> <laughs> Leave it to Peter to add something useful to the whole thing. Um, so, essentially, Kevin joined Agent Paranormal afterwards, too, as well. We rely on heavenly, heaven, heavily, not heavenly. Heavenly. We don't think of you in that way. No, either way. Heavily on your skill set when it comes to doing all kinds of promotions for us, filming, and all that kind of good stuff. And not to mention that you are a seasoned investigator as well. Which brings me to Chris Ford. Hi, Chris. How you doing? Doing well, man. So, Chris has been a horror movie lover since the age of six. Same here. Yep. Exorcist, still the number one. Always. Still watch that movie. Got to turn the, the nightlight thing on. <laughs> Even at my age. Poltergeist. <laughs> so, yeah. I came across Chris at one of the events that we were doing, and it just turns out that him and I had a, uh, a commonality in Boy Scouts at one time yep. at the same troop. And uh, he was very interested in the paranormal, wanted to get involved with the group. Uh, he's done some filming for us on location at some various sites that he got us into, which we'll reveal that stuff a little bit later in the year. Because Chris has got a lot of projects on his docket. He's a busy guy. And uh, we welcome him into our group. And uh, he wants to learn a lot about the paranormal. And he is one hell of a video guy. That's all I can tell you. Which you'll see when we do some streaming type shows live on location. That's right. Live on location. Is that a real thing? It is. It's a real thing. Gonna stream live. We are. And you have to keep your pants on, <laughs> Peter. In three states, yes. It's okay. a mandatory law has been passed. Oh, we can just keep it We can shoot out, above yeah. the waist. Yeah. So you know. <laughs> that way everybody's comfortable. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so with that, we move on. So spirit communication is what we want but, to talk about. But tonight. Rich, you but, don't tell but, anybody who you are. Well, my name is Rich. <laughs> Or, or are you going with the mystery thing? You're going with mystique and mystery? I am. Rich, I, I actually met Rich because five or seven, ten years ago, 15, Rich actually carried me out of a burning building. 
I you did. saved my life. I have the scars still to prove it someplace. Right, right there. It's a scar. So a little bit about me then, if you guys are going to like guilt me into this, bully me. And these guys are bullies. They're going to bully me into we're this. We're not going to guilt you into it. You, you know out. you want to tell us about yourself. Okay. Come on. Here's a little bit about me. So You put my laundry out on the line. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> so as a young child, I had no paranormal experiences. I was always a lover of the Twilight Zone, horror movies, ghost stories, all that kind of really cool stuff. But I never really acted on it. I was just kind of too busy being a, a teenager, getting in trouble and doing this. Actually, I was actually a good kid. I didn't have any problems with anything. So any, anywho, later in life, um, <clears throat> I became in, I got a job working for a company that was a booking agency. And one day I got received a telephone call from a client of mine, and he said, do you have a ghost hunter on your roster? I said, a ghost hunter? I don't think I do. Why? Well, I know this guy who is looking for an agent. I said, cool. Who is he? He said, well, his name is John Zaffis. I said, never heard of him. So he goes, I'll give you his website. He just did an event at our school. Students loved him. <laughs> Check him out. So I went to his website, looked at it. Of course, it was all black and white. And there is this guy with a black suit on holding a big sword. I'm like, oh, that's exactly what I thought a ghost hunter would look like. <laughs> Wielding a sword. It was like total Games of Thrones meets his exorcist. And not only was he a ghost hunter, he was a demonologist. So this guy really knows his stuff. So he's at a next level. So I call him up, and I'm nervous now. I'm, I'm nervous. I'm really nervous. I'm, I'm, I'm nervous right now, too. But anyways, I'm nervous. So I'm like, this guy's going to be like totally serious. He's going to be, what is it that you want? I'm a ghost hunter. So I'm like, uh, <laughs> Mr. Zaffis? He's like, what do you need? And I said, well, you know, I told him who I was and stuff. He goes, oh, let's talk. And this guy, as many of you can attest to, turned out to be a huge ball buster. He was like the <laughs> nicest guy. I mean, just to hang out with him, you're like, you just want to. I mean, he's that He's that dirty uncle. Yeah, he is. He <laughs> definitely is. I can't wait to meet him. <laughs> he's such an awesome dude. You say that now, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Until he says something when your wife's standing next to you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure she's heard it all. So. And then with that relationship, it, it grew from there, and uh, I was introduced to so many other paranormal celebs, or paracelebs, as we like to call them. People like Jason Hawes, Grant Wilson, Christopher Moon. And by the way, Christopher Moon is going to be a guest tonight on our show. So let me just give you a, uh, just a quick rundown of who we so, got as guests tonight. So is that where Agent comes from? That is where the agent comes from. So you're a real-life agent. I am. I am. So are we giving you a double zero intro? Are you like double oh five? Double oh nine. Nine? Okay. Yeah. I'm an agent, but I don't do clowns because they scare the hell out of me. And I don't do mimes because I just don't get it. <laughs> so, <laughs> and music sometimes, but I have horrible taste in music. And so, <laughs> if, it, if it sounds like Def Leppard or Motley Crue... I'll listen to it, but that doesn't mean I can sell it, but I'll listen to it. So that's how Agent Paranormal became. It was a group that was formed in the idea of, of having an open paranormal group where we could all talk about things evenly, and then these gentlemen all joined, and we have a couple members that are not here tonight, like Diane Federoff, Nicole Beretta, who's busy at home studying her classwork. True and crime. I give, it, I give it to her. That, that's a hell of a... Yeah, yeah. Job field to get into. She definitely needs to talk a little bit about that stuff on our show. And then, of course, we have uh, Maeve Jordan, who's not here to join us tonight. Uh, we also have Sarah Domser, who's not here as well. So that completes the Agent Paranormal team. So moving forward, we've got a couple events that we're planning on the docket. So if you want to come out and see us at an event, see us lecture, do an investigation with us. We've got something we're working on for the month of April. We'll release the date as soon as we get a couple things firmed up. And we also have another one in October that we uh, are in the... Peter's looking at me all surprised. <laughs> <laughs> I was just trying for the people at home. I mean. He's the entertainer, like I said before. So we're working on those, and the, the, the goal is that we're going to actually do a, like a live streaming ghost hunt from those locations. So you definitely want to be there. We'll, we'll show you some things, teach you some stuff, and you'll have a great time. We and have to be careful not to cross the streams, though, when we're doing <laughs> whatever we do. We can't cross the streams. 
For all those listening at home, please stay with us. It's going to get better. I promise. <laughs> all right. <laughs> we, 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 everyone in the studio is cracking up. Thanks, guys. We, we, we appreciate the support we're getting here from the D staff. Diane just toned in. Oh, she good. She is okay. at home watching. She just got home a little while ago. Oh, good. Okay. So, anyhow, moving forward here. So, we got two guests that we're going to bring onto the show tonight. I'm just going to give you a little teaser information about them. First of all, let me pull up the pick here. Tonight's guest is Christopher Moon, who is a world-renowned ghost hunter and uh, someone who specializes in spirit communication. If you're not familiar with Chris, he's been on a &E Network's Paranormal State. He's been on the Travel Channel's show, Most Extreme Places to Stay, and Ghost Adventures, as well as numerous ABC, CBS, NBC, and the CW-type shows. Holy crap, he just came up on the screen. It did. <laughs> there he is. Nice. He is also authored the book. We're going to put it up here right now. Can everybody see that? Yep, we're good. Okay. So there you go. That's the Ghost Box book that Chris authored. And we'll give you uh, some instructions of where you can pick that up later. Chris is going to be a guest on our show later. In addition to Chris, we also have his mom. That's right, his mom, Paulette, but known in many circles as Mama Moon. She's going to be joining us as well. She lectures all across the uh, country. She is a world-renowned psychic. And, man, can that woman do tarot cards. Wow. I am telling you, it's absolutely amazing. You've also seen her on ABC's family uh, channel show, Scariest Places on Earth, and in the film called Chasing the Shadows. And she's also appeared on multiple Fox News shows in the Denver area. Uh, Paulette actually is from Denver, and Chris is actually now in Texas. So that's who we have as a guest tonight. So let's just jump right into this spirit communication stuff that people are talking about. Do you guys know anything about this spirit communication? I mean, can people talk to spirits? Well, if anyone has enough beer in them, you can talk to anyone. <laughs> Oh, I've different talked, spirits, I'm sorry. I've <laughs> talked to a few of those spirits. Chris? Um, you know, I I remember buying my first Ouija board back when I was like eight or nine. And at the time, we thought we could. So that explains but, a lot now to me. Yes. About you. <laughs> <laughs> and Kevin's over there got this big smile on his face. Kevin, would you like to add something? <laughs> well, I, I, of course, I believe that everyone should be, you know, somebody has the abilities to speak to spirits. And some point in your life, you, you come mm -hmm. across that. I mean... Not everybody's going to come across that, but yeah, I mean, th there's a lot of history in spirit communication, so. We're going to talk a little bit about that, but first let me say a couple things about that, and then we've got a little show and tell for you, and we're going to talk about uh, the Ouija board. It's such a fun subject, the Ouija board, because it really scares the crap out of some people, but when I look at it, it's a cardboard game with a plastic thing you move around. That's it. That's all I see. You mean Milton Bradley doesn't put a demon in every box? It must be expensive. How can they do that at like eleven ninety nine or twelve ninety nine a game? Wait, is it Milton? No, Parker Brothers. Parker Brothers. I apologize there. Oh, oh the, boy. The brothers might. Milton Bradley won't. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, spirit communication. When we do our investigations, um, we rely a lot on scientific equipment to give us some indication of what's going on. So when we walk into the room, we're not like, wow, this place is haunted. Wow, there's stuff going on. There's a couple different things that happen. First of all, we rely a little bit on our instincts. Do we not, Peter, for things that we feel or things that we sense? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was a hard yes. That wasn't a soft yes. Yes. So in addition to that, we also use... I'm uh, just messing with you. <laughs> okay, good. I appreciate that. We also use scientific base equipment, equipment that was not even designed for paranormal field. It was designed, designed for other fields to detect things like temperature fluctuations, electromagnetic fields, uh, audio recorders to detect certain sounds. And we use that equipment to try to find some type of findings to lead towards evidence of the paranormal. But not only that, we also play around with stuff that we call fringe equipment. And fringe equipment is stuff like the Ovilus, Ghost Box. I know if you follow the paranormal, you probably own one of these or watch a television show where the investigators are using these spirit boxes. And they sound like a radio just going, and a voice will come through. So let's back up a second, if we will, 
And Pete, I'm going to pass it to you. Give us a little discussion about the Ouija board and why it's so important into spirit, into spirit communication. And why should people use it or why should people stay away from it? I, I, I don't know. <laughs> the Ouija board. You know, being from the Utica Rome area, I never knew that it was spelled O U I J A. I always thought it was W E E G E E, Ouija. I, I, that's like a local <laughs> thing. And not, now I look at it, it's like the Ouija board. <laughs> so, since the dawn of time, man has wanted to talk to those who have gone before them. This is really my voice, I'm having a cold here. <laughs> Okay, so if you haven't noticed yet, we're going to joke around a little bit. And if you have questions out there, you know, feel free to shoot them in any of the chat rooms, this and that. But I guess if you want to go back to something called automatic writing, you have to go back to the ancient Chineses. You have the Sumerians. You have all types of things throughout um, Greece. You had uh, Plato. You have all these, all these different people who posed various theories, because people are like, well, well, the ghost hunting phenomenon has only been in the past 20 years. Quite the contrary. It's been around a long time. And my favorite topic of the Egyptians, oh, it all goes back to Egypt. But that's a conversation for 15 more shows. So fast forward to America about the 1840s. A little place in upstate, no, upstate, central. So in western New York, there's a place called Lilydale which was basically something founded by three sisters, the Fox sisters. They were behind something called the spiritualist movement in America. And there was around a time when there was a lot of turmoil and trouble in the country. And during the American Civil War, it gained a lot of steam. And you'll notice anytime there's actually a big war, the spiritualist movement really explodes out there. Because war leads to mass death and a lot of untimely death, and people want to have that final communication, so to speak. So the Fox sisters claim to have had these communications. And roughly after that, I believe the guy's name was Kennard. He created a board, which would be your pre-board to the modern Ouija board. So one of his employees, by the name of William Fuld, F-U-L-D, bought the rights to it, and put out the first Ouija board. So the word Ouija is actually two words put together. It's the French word for yes and the German word for yes. So we oui and ja. So it's actually the yes, yes board. Why did you just call it that? So there were many variations put together. And anybody who knows anything about William Fuld, he owned the Ouija board. Nobody else was ever allowed to produce the Ouija board. He went after everyone who put out any type of variant, including his grandson. He sued his own grandson. His grandson put a board out there called the Mysterious, the Mystical Aura. I can't even think right now. Mystical Oracle? Was that it or something like that? I believe it was. So when he won the lawsuit, he actually put that on every Ouija board right under the word Ouija. Just, just so he could show his grandson I owned it. Wow. Oh. And he died under mysterious circumstances. Some people think he fell off a building or he jumped or demons came and got him or whatever happened. But the family did eventually sell it to Parker Brothers in Salem, Salem, Massachusetts. Of course. Where they are continued to be produced today. So what do we have? We have a It's graphic. a piece of plywood. Right? You've all seen it. So the one we're going to show you is probably about World War I-ish. It's a 1917 vintage Ouija board. If you are into paranormal collectibles, you'll note that this particular one, and I'm not going to be able to show you the back of it, but this is about a three to $500 model, so they can command quite a bit of money. So if you see them at antique shows or garage sales for 20 or 30 bucks, and they are actually on tiger wood plywood, you might want to buy them. Hmm. Good to know. So, and I, I got a few more show and, show and tells. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. So look at the box. 
Look at the box. It's got a scary thing on it. That is frightening. Yes. Salem, Massachusetts. I've heard of it. Salem, Massachusetts. There's some scary things that went on in Salem, Massachusetts. Best cup of tea you'll ever get. Um, so, Rich, do you want to hold this one for a second? This is do the I per- dare? <laughs> this is the personal size. And this is the upstate New York Utica if you need to hex your whole village. Ouija board. <laughs> <laughs> so when just a little one won't do and you have to hex out a whole family, that's where you call in Super Ugu Aja. <laughs> so, so Disruption Network staff, if you're listening, be good to us or we'll hide one of these someplace where you can't find it. All of Utica, you're not safe. <laughs> Oh, Sage isn't going to work against pow- Peter's powerful Ouija boards. <laughs> so I guess this is an interlude into what Chris is doing. So this is actually one form of spirit communication. So there's a plan chat, which actually looks like a little table. The originals actually look like a little three-legged table. So if you know anything about table tipping, which is another form of spirit communication, that's what that is supposed to represent. Now, there's actually a psychologist science behind why the planchette moves, that you're actually making it move subliminally. We have a member of our group that had some very bad experiences with the Ouija board, and I'm not sure that's possible from your own mind making that move, so whatever you want to take from it. But the one thing to hammer home is the intent. If you're using it for, should we use the word entertainment? Sure. If you're using it for entertainment, it is what it is. If you're using it for, in the religious sense, what they call divination, that's trying to find out information about the future or about events that you shouldn't know things about, that can carry consequences with it. There is a price for knowledge you're not supposed to know. That's why we always say it's the intent of what we're doing. So when Chris and Mama Moon come on later, their intent is to help people. So that's why they're delving into the type of spirit communication that they deal with. So whoever they're talking with or whoever they're channeling through, the intent is to help the intended receiver. So I guess that's that's the basic of a spirit board. So that pushes you into the modern range, starting with Edison and Nikola Tesla. That's when they started bringing on more of a mechanical presence to the world of spirit communication. Yeah, that that um, that was called uh, ITC. It's uh, I can't remember what it is. Instrumental transcommunication. Uh, That's that's really when they started taking technology and added it into spirit communication. Uh, The whole story with Edison was he was like really close with his mother and. She was really on her deathbed. They were discussing how he, they wanted to, in some way, be able to keep in contact with each other. So Edison started developing uh, what he would later call the, the telephone to the dead. And with that, it, it's not really certain whether or not he actually built it or what. Because what happened was, after Edison had passed, then... Everything just disappeared. Anything that he had written, anything that he had maybe even built was gone. Uh, He did do like three or four interviews on it, and only one remained. And the assistants basically just brushed it off and said he was making fun of the reporters at that point. So we're we're not really sure what's going on, but we do know that, you know, fast forward in time with the Frank's box and the variation like uh, Chris Moon uses is actually supposed to be based off of the blueprints that Thomas Edison used. Uh, he, he wasn't the first, he wasn't the last, you know, but, uh, you know, after Edison tried to do his thing, you move on forward in, into the 1900s, and you have Attila, Attila von Zan? Hold on, uh, Sazle, that's what it is. Attila von Sazle. And what he did is he used a 78 RPM recorder to try and speak to the dead. And he tried and tried and tried and tried, and he, he just couldn't do it. He started that in, like, 1941. He started doing that. And he said it never worked. And it wasn't until about 1953 when he switched to reel-to-reel is when he started catching things. And then 
as we know, a few years later in 1959, that's when you come around to Fredrik Jurgensen, who is the, the Swedish uh, artist and filmmaker. He's out in the middle of the woods just trying to collect bird sounds and using a reel-to-reel. He listened back to it when he got back to his house, and he heard his mother, his father, and his late wife's voice calling his name. So, I mean, that, that was the first start of the technological boom of using that for spirit communication. Before that, we had, you know, the table with the rocking tables and stuff like that. But, I mean, we, we're so far advanced where we are today with that. I mean, that's just... I mean, it makes sense with the reel-to-reel. Yeah. Because it picks up so many more frequencies than a record would. You don't have the noise either. Yeah. So, between the two... Well, <clears throat> when we do investigations, um, we always have spirit boxes. Our spirit boxes are, well, I've heard them turn as uh, shack hacks, but essentially they're AM, FM radios that uh, have been modified so they in fact loop. So they start at the beginning of the band, the band go to the end of the band and sample each station along the way. Then they just keep looping around just, you know, over and over again. And... There's two things that we pick up on that. Number one is we do get things, we do hear names or voices or disembodied voices or we hear radio chatter, okay? And most of the time we dismiss most of the stuff that we hear. But when you ask a specific question and you get an answer to that question, then it starts to tie in some some relevance, and it's, you know, then you start to think, is there something more to this? Now, you know, most of us, I, I can speak on behalf of uh, myself, and Pete can agree or disagree, and same with Kevin, but we've all done a lot of spirit box communication. I mean, I learned a few things from Pete. What Pete did was sort of cool. What Pete did is took an auto recorder and just started recording questions and pauses in between them. Then he'd go put it in some creepy, scary place that he didn't want to be in, and then that's where he would uh, essentially play it and then later on listen to it afterwards. And in the one at the Rucker Mansion, you did that. You could hear you asking questions, and then all of a sudden a response came back with, uh, with someone's name. Now, I've got some EVPs that are, that are here, which we'll pay, play for you a little bit later. But there's my headphone. just came back on. Thank you. <laughs> so, so a question out there, Kevin. Yeah. What, what is the purpose of the radio? So I guess the purpose of the radio in any ITC is that it's serving as the lung center of your body because a spirit would now be disembodied. If you're no longer within your, you guys might like this, this the, in my metaphysical study, this is the first time I've ever heard the human body referred to as a decaying meat vehicle. <laughs> so now that you've shed the decaying meat vehicle, you just have the spirit or the essence. So anything that was mortal to you that helped you communicate is no longer an option. So that's the purpose of ITC, correct? So it's now going through an electronic means of communication. Yeah. It's replacing the physical body now. The conduit. It's, yeah, basically, it's the, the energy that it's using is using this equipment. It's... I mean, the, the best way that we can say is, you know, we, we can't hear at the frequency that the spirits are actually speaking to us. It's just out of our realm as, as humans to be able to hear at that level. So, like, when we have a recorder or anything like that and we're recording it, what that does, that flattens that audio down to a, you know, hearable level. And that's why we can hear it in playback, but we can't hear it in person. Right, and we also, at times, doing spirit communications, we'll hear a disembodied voice, but we don't hear it come from the actual instrument that we're using, yeah. like a, a spirit box. I mean, you're sitting there, all of a sudden you'll hear somebody say, hello, and you're, you'll hear it in your ear, you know, things like that, or you'll start to smell like smoke or cigar smoke or something like that. I know Pete and I went to a uh, historical society in Whitesboro, and we walked in, and they asked us to come up. They wanted to talk to us about a few things. And as we were up there, they started talking about a fire. And you could immediately start to smell the smoke. And I remember, I mean, Pete, do you smell? He's like, yeah, I smell smoke. And she goes, oh, that happens all the time. Then it just goes away. And within three minutes, it was gone. So, and did we actually really smell smoke? Was there smoke actually in the air? 
No. Was it reaching into our consciousness to try to tell us, smell this, so we thought we were smelling smoke? I don't know. That would seem to be, to me, would be a little bit more of a legitimate reason than to make smoke appear, because you would be able to see something. I mean, the, the level of smoke we smell is like, wow, boy, yeah. it's like a fire going on in here. It was we, that we can go on forever talking about, you know, the theories that are why we're experiencing that in that case, but I mean, that's that's a whole nother episode, or maybe two episodes of talking about the theories on that. That's the seven Claire's. <laughs> Claire audient, Claire sentient, Claire voyant, Claire Gustin, Claire East. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to have our guest call on here. Uh, Chris Moon is going to Skype in. Um, and we're going to talk to him a little bit. On, I'm going to refer to a case also that uh, he worked and then I was uh, able to, to witness. So Chris should be calling in here at any second. But before we go there, um, we do have some stuff with us. Like I mentioned the ovulus earlier. We have one of those we can throw up on display a little bit later. So as you're listening to the show, make sure you can stream us on all the platforms out there, Twitch, Periscope, Facebook, YouTube. You can go to the Agent Paranormal page and watch us, as well as the Disruption Network page. So, you know, definitely hit a like button, follow us. Um, if you want to hear something or see something on future episodes, let us know. We want to hear from you. We want to bring you content that you want to see and hear. Uh, that's why we started with spirit communication. That's one of the the biggest things that people ask us about. I, w- I would tell people to pick our brains, but I don't think you want to get in there. <laughs> I, <there's>, no. <laughs> no, you don't. Who knows what's in there? And again, we should thank the Disruption Network very much for their professional setup and oh, this place allowing is, us to be here. This place is awesome. I don't know if you've ever been to Disruption Network Studio, but uh, if you like tech stuff, you would get very uh, tingly in certain areas if you came into this place. And I think you know what areas I'm talking about, so you all laugh at me. That's what we You want, me, you want me to go there? Thing. You want me to throw that up there? We laugh, but we all I, I think that tingling that you're feeling is the high EMF in here, but it's... <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> well. Let, let's turn the old REM pod on to see if it detects it. Let's see. REM power's activated. Yeah, too bad here. And for those of you from the Utica Rome area, it's a number five on the Brujal meter. That's what he's talking about. The Brujal meter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're killing me. That guy's got cannolis. What can I tell you? So if you want to call in when we get to that point, we will take some calls later on in the show. Um, should I give him the number? Rizal Kanampi. What? Yeah, I just, I just messaged him to give us a call. Okay. So Skype in. So. And if you need paranormal help, don't be afraid to call us. Especially if you're going to put food out for us, we'll be there right now. <laughs> just, just give me your address. We will be right now. leave this show right yes. now. <laughs> I will eat that ghost right out of your house. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, scare that ghost out of your house. No, that, no, he literally meant eat that ghost. Trust me. We do it for food. What can I tell you? <laughs> it's another show for another night. Oh, my God. The spreads people have given us over the year. Chris, you're going to find out. Oh, my God. I'm looking forward Good stuff. to that. Waterville, that, that buffalo wing dip that that lady made. Oh, my God. I didn't even care about the ghost after a while. <laughs> 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 the, the beds are floating around. The demons are coming through the mirrors. And Pete's downstairs eating. Oh, my God. Did you put coke in the hair? <laughs> <laughs> it's a true story. True story. That's so helpful. Chris is going to be a real treat. Just keep tuned in with us if you have any questions. And Tesla and Edison were the ones who brought up the the vacuum tubes and the diaphragm concept because that was the early tech advances in spirit yeah. communication. Go ahead, Kevin. Give him a call on Skype if you can. Call him. Call him. I don't think you saw my text massage. I sent him a text massage. That sounds kind of weird, doesn't it? We should have him do a crystal show. I'm very interested in crystals. Yeah, that would be really cool. What type of crystals, Peter? People listening to the show and watching me think you're into like the crystal. Well, the mythology of crystals. Crystal meth, you know. (laughs) (laughs) You have a call. A little music going on. (laughs) Well, hello. Well, we're calling, but he's not going anywhere. Well, he'll be joining us shortly. Yeah. 
He'll be our first guest tonight, and then we'll also have Paulette Moon on afterwards. So, Is she going to read anybody's tarots? No, no, not tonight, but that would be really cool for her to do on the air. So we will do that. So let me give you a little background here of Christopher Moon and why I wanted to bring him on the show and talk with us tonight. So a couple years ago, I went to an event that he did at the Lumber Baron Inn, which is in Denver. And um, it's a place, it's a very nice place, actually. But back in the 70s, they had a sling of, of two female college students that lived there. And uh, so there was activity there. So he did an event there. Um, <clears throat> here he is. Is he with us? Chris, can you hear us? We can, I can hear you. Oh, Ladies and just gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to introduce Christopher Moon, or as I call him, Mooney. Mooney? Mooney. Yes. Hi. How are you? <laughs> Greetings. How is everything down in Texas? It's good. It's good. We're, uh, we're doing the uh, uh, playoff party right now, and, and uh, the uh, Packers are getting murdered. Yeah. Yeah. I think everyone's going to get murdered by the 49ers this year. I have to agree. <laughs> are you proudly wearing your Denver Bronco jersey? I got it on right now. Ah, I had a boy. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, so Chris, we're doing an episode here on spirit communication, and I Where? learned a lot of the, the techniques of spirit communication from you. You show me some interesting Where? things, everything from a spirit guide and, you know, and how to properly talk to spirits. As you know, in an in a event that we did... Um, where was this where I got zapped, Chris? It was out in... Uh, Hinsdale. Hinsdale. Hinsdale, New York. Yes, thank you. Boy, I got zapped hard. And I remember even yep. when I asked the question about the exorcisms, you looked at me and you're like, dude, why? And I'm like, yeah. uh, it was kind of like pass a question along, and it came my turn, like spin the bottle. So I, <laughs> I asked. <laughs> and I didn't get kissed. I got whacked. I got whacked yeah. by a spirit. So, But what I wanted to talk about real quick um, is, is can you share with us... Um, some things that you've learned about spirit communication that would be helpful for people who are doing this as part of paranormal investigating? Yeah, I would say the most important thing, honestly, right off the bat is respect. You really need to go into every investigation, any kind of spirit communication with respect. Um, you see a lot of the TV shows that, that provoke and, and kind of call these spirits out and, and all that kind of fun stuff, and it never works out well. Um, so, you know, if you go in with respect and, and you really go in and kind of announce who you are, why you're there, what you're doing, you're going to get much better results, uh, than if you go in any other way. Now, one of the things that I've noticed that you do, and, and I know Pete and I have started to do this in some of our communication sessions at, at locations is you ask for a spirit guide. Right. Now, do you feel that's effective yeah, it, in what, how you do your thing? Yeah, it's vital. Um, for me, um, working with the ghost box, I, I was the very first person to ever take a, a ghost box into the field way back in the early 2000s. And, um, you know, I, I realized very early on there's these things called spirit technicians that work on this project. And once you start working with this team of spirit technicians, they, they work as your bridge. They work as the in-between on the whole situation to make sure that you're actually dealing with the uh, energies that you're reaching out to. Because as we know... In doing this, it can be dangerous. It can be extremely dangerous doing this, and you're, uh, you know, you need to be 100 percent sure that you're communicating with who you're trying to. Now, you said dangerous, and, and I know this firsthand as I got zapped by something. What right. can we do as paranormal investigators to protect ourselves, if you will? There's a lot of different ways, you know. Um, before I go into any investigation, I go in, I make sure that I'm 100% grounded when I go into an investigation to make sure that there's just absolutely nothing that can can attach itself to me. After the investigation, I'll, I'll actually cleanse myself uh, from time to time with sage, uh, you know, things along those lines, usually white sage. Um, but, you know, you can also uh, use crystals. Crystals are, are a great way to protect yourself and... and uh, I've, I've recently learned how important it is to use the right crystals on an investigation. And, and uh, you know, everything from tourmaline to, you know, obsidian, things like that, really will protect you on an investigation. That's interesting, because we were, we were just chatting just briefly about crystals earlier before the show. So I just want to talk quickly with you about a case that you worked that I, was, I came out and actually witnessed. Um, the Lumber Baron Inn. So uh, I'm going to throw up this graphic so our viewers can see that this is a newspaper article from one of the publications in Denver showing the picture of the two girls that were slain 
Can you tell us a little bit about this place? Oh, it's uh, it's one of the hotbeds of paranormal activity in the United States. Um, you know, it's, uh, it was originally a, a huge mansion built by a, a lumber baron in the, the late 1800s. And then what happened was is they actually um, turned it into, as time went on, it became a school and, and uh, then eventually became low-rent apartments at one point. And when it went into the low-rent apartments, that's when these two girls actually, or this one girl actually rented the property. And uh, she was um, brutally murdered inside the location. And they found her, as well as her friend, uh, dead inside the room. So when we went in there, we did the, uh, the investigation the first time. Uh, the, the new owner at that time had come in and restored it as a full mansion bed and breakfast. And uh, we didn't know any of the history of it. We just heard that there was a lot of activity there. That's why we did the investigation. And I was actually um, uh, whispered to by one of the girl's spirits while I was in that room. And when I went back and, and told the owner about what had happened to me, he said, you know, how did you know about that? Did you research the property? And I said, no, I'm just telling you exactly what happened. And <clears throat> that's when we found out about the murders. Now, when you did your event a few years ago where I was at, we took a couple pictures, and I want to put these up on the screen for the viewers of our show to look at. You you let me use these. You gave me your permission earlier on. but right. um, So this place has got a lot of like activity going on, some of it on the darker side. So, yeah. so what I did is I just put up the picture, Chris, of there was a girl, female investigator that was um, <clears throat> standing, looking out a room, trying to take a picture of a friend, and I was standing right next to her. And when she took the photo... Her jaw just dropped, and she goes, something must be wrong with my phone. And I'm like, why? And then she showed me the picture, and in front of her was this black figure right in front of her, blocking out almost the whole girl except part of her head. Right. Now, what do you think something like that could be? Well, you know, that place has so much history, like I said, from all the, the, the different things it's been and, and all the people that have been there. Um, you know, it would be easy to say that, you know, it was, uh, you know, a spirit of the girl or, or, or the girls that were there, whatever the case might be. But, you know, I really think it was probably a darker entity um, because we, we had taken a couple of pictures that night. I don't know if you had both of them. Oh, I do. Um, I do. Yeah, that first one popped up with the dark shadow figure, um, which to me uh, looks like a, just an absolutely huge demon um, or maybe, you know, a, a, a female, whatever you want to call it. But, but it definitely is something dark. And then in the secondary picture, um, you know, you get something completely different. Yeah, I want to throw up another picture now. Uh, this is the actual picture that I put up that was taken in that bedroom that we were doing the spirit box sessions in. And... In this photo, you can see what looks like the, the reflection or the flash of an IR light. And then it looks like there's something in the middle that we couldn't identify in the photo. And right. so we took a closer look at it. And I'm, and I'm going to throw up the final pic, what happened when you enlarged this. And right. this appears to be some type of entity. like, And it looks like it's got halos or round things that it's thrown up with one arm and catching with the right. other. Mm -hmm. Any idea what that is? Well, I hate to keep screaming the D word, but to me, it definitely does look demonic. Um, you know, if it's not demonic, it's interdimensional. It's, it, it does look like any sort of human spirit that I've ever seen or encountered before. And I was thinking about this the other night, Rich. You know, it's crazy because you talk about paranormal events taking place and, you know, it's always good to have a witness and all those kind of things. We had over 120 witnesses that night. And the amazing thing about that was is that um, these aren't pictures that you or I snapped. These are pictures that the attendees took. Right. And for them to have that experience and see, and, and, and we're just, we're scratching the, the, you know, very tip of this thing because it was a very intense night. Um, but, you know, for them to have that experience, I, I don't know if there's ever been another event where so many people have experienced paranormal activity and walked away 100% sure that they saw or heard something. Now, you had an unusual experience there afterwards where you went back and did another event there. And right. there was a, a, a gentleman that came to the event that was sort of, I don't know, unstable, if you will, mm -hmm. that showed up to do some harm to some people. Right. And, yeah. and something sort of bizarre happened. Do you, you want to share that with us? Because when you told me that story, I was like, what? Yeah, this uh, this really talks about the, the new owners had come in that owned the mansion, the, the bed and breakfast, and, and the spirits there, the girls, were very protective of 
uh, the owners. Uh, they really look after the place. So they were holding an event up there, and if memory serves me correctly, essentially what happened was um, a man had come to an event uh, inside the ballroom, and he had actually come in fully armed with guns and knives. And nobody knew this was going but uh, he was planning on doing some harm to people there. They later found out. And when he uh, stood up at one point to make something happen, he actually dropped dead, dropped dead of a heart attack. He was there, and then he was gone. And that's when the police came and found him completely, um, you know, armed, and, and uh, then later found out what his intentions were. So we believe that the spirits there actually removed him uh, so that he couldn't do harm to the people there. That's If that is true, that is absolutely bizarre. It's crazy. Yeah. That's nuts. Well, listen, Chris, right. we're going to let you get back to your football party. <laughs> awesome. So thank you so much for being a guest on tonight's show. We're going to speak with your mom here in a few. Um, Sounds great. You guys have any last-minute questions for Chris? Uh, tune into his page. They're on what? Paranormal Warehouse now? Paranormal Warehouse. If you're into right. crystals, they have on-the-spot crystal sales every now and then. They come up with some good stuff. Now, you sell, you yeah. do some crystal stuff right on Facebook, right, Chris? Yeah, we do the sales on Facebook about three days a week. There you go. So tune in to, uh, to is it Moon D or is it Psychic Chris Moon? Uh, you can uh, you can tune in to uh, Box Talk with Moon D on Paranormal Warehouse. And you can check out Magic Moon Spirit Jewelry on Facebook. Cool. Thank you so much, Chris. Have a great night, man. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, you too. Bye. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. There you go, my friends. That is bizarre. That was crazy. <laughs> yeah. I, having been with you at the Hinsdale house, when you asked that question, I wanted to just walk over there and be like, Psh. Yeah, thanks. Like, let's go into the exorcist <laughs> and ask the demon if he wants a priest. <laughs> I, I That's going to end well. I remember when we left, I remember telling Pete, I, I don't feel good. What do you mean? I feel like, he goes, were well, you coming down with something? I go, no, I don't feel like, like fluish. I feel like just fatigued, like just something just sucked everything out of me. You know, and I'm just like, and then we went out, we we went, and of course, we had to go eat, because we're paranormal investigators, so 3 o'clock in the morning is a great time to go eat dinner, you know, <laughs> and have some drinks, whatever, so we went out and did that, we got back, I had a horrible backache, we left in the morning, and for two days, I was just like, I was, I had some problems, I really did, and then I called up um, Chris, and I and I talked to him, and he said, he explained to me what happened, that you got zapped, I also talked with John Zaffis, he concurred, so I had to do a grounding thing, and through the grounding thing, I kind of went outside and, you know, kind of stood out in the grass. It was a beautiful day, by the way. I sat out there barefoot and put my arms up in the air, you know, like, like I'm doing something. And there was a lawnmower running in my neighbor's yard. All of a sudden, the lawnmower stopped. And I looked over, and there's my neighbor looking at me and goes, dude, are you all right? <laughs> oh. <laughs> so he, he could have saw me here, like, just standing in shorts and T-shirt, my hands up in the air, like, oh. my Jesus, best Jesus pose, you know. And, I'm, and he goes, are you all right? And I'm like, yeah, yeah. I did not tell him what i was doing by the way i said no i'm just stretching you know and i went back inside went back down because i still felt horrible and then i swear and i'm telling you right now about an hour and a half later i jumped up off the couch and i was like wow that's weird i feel like nothing ever happened so i got up went to mcdonald's that's what you do after you're sick right oh, yeah. <laughs> you go to mcdonald's and you get a vanilla milkshake and a quarter pounder with cheese that creates another demon <laughs> yes. So, and then after that, my my I, my wife is home, and she's like, "You made a fast recovery." I said, "Yeah, I feel great." I went out, mowed the lawn, watched him stand on the lawn with his arms up in the air, do his best <laughs> Jesus pose. So, anyways. So, can I hijack you for a couple minutes here? <laughs> I, what what's involved in that? Is there anything weird, or are you just? So this is the first show. A lot of people are probably going to catch this on a rerun or on their own free time, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. They're probably looking at this, paranormal investigators, you're all full of biscuits. There's no way any of this crap's real. It's all a figment of your imagination. Everything's a lie. This, that. I guess that's what we want to help people understand. Having had an experience at seven years old, there's a phrase in this business, which I don't like. People are like, I'm a skeptical believer. Well, you're either skeptic or you believe. I had an event which made me a believer. So if you can still be skeptical, I'm happy for you. But I've experienced so much stuff over such a wide band of, of different scenarios, situations, equipment. I, I could probably, if you brought me into court, give you a good case of why it is probably real. Again, 
Paranormal means anything out of the normal. Paranormal doesn't mean ghost. Just like UFO doesn't mean alien. It means it's an unidentified flying object. So anything can be explainable, but these are the things that happen like you got sick. Now, fast forward before Rich got sick at this one location, we were outside doing our, whole, our own little thing using one of his spirit boxes. Something identified itself as an imp, which is an elemental creature, not from this realm, interdimensional travel, as you heard Chris talk about. And I looked down to see this little black shadowy human being about this big walk out of the bushes, walk right across the stone path, right back into the bushes. And I even told Rich at the time, so I mean, there, there's been so much over such a long period of time, I, I can't even question anymore that it's not real. He was whiter than he normally is. Well, the thing is, is it seems like, you know, being new to the game, you know, a lot of people think about it as what they see on the movies. You know, it's so exaggerated and everything for movies, and then you what you see in real life isn't that exaggerated, not all the time. But it's the little things, like when we were at Rucker, and you had asked about, you know, who was in the room with us, and it called out my name, first and last. You know what I mean? It's not, you know, it's not something the movie's going to be made out of, but it's those little things that's like, they give you chills. Sometimes the real things are more scary than what Hollywood produces, don't and you think? That's true. And, and Rich keeps talking about a spirit box. So this is an AM FM radio that's manipulated. It's scanning nonstop through five to six radio stations per second. Yes. What are the odds it's going to stop and say Peter Leonard? Well, that was the same thing I mean, as it, it, you know, the box at Chris. And then all of a sudden, you know, he was like, well, Chris who? And then it said my name. And it was like, well, yeah. what are the odds of that hitting in a radio station? See, everybody, that particular time. Uh, and this will be the end of my reign. Everybody wants to explain the paranormal with science. I think they need to do it with math and statistics. Start showing numbers, and that once you get the mathematicians involved, then the scientists are going to get involved. Yes. What are the odds of a radio <laughs> stopping exactly on... You have a phone is this call. Mama Moon? Go for it. We have a Sorry. phone call from our next guest, Paulette Moon. Hi, Paulette. Good evening. How are you? Very good. Very good. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, sure. Paulette Moon, thank you for joining us on the show tonight. We really appreciate it. Um, we just had your son, Chris Moon, on here just a short while ago. Oh, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, okay. <laughs> so we wanted to talk a little bit with you about spirit communication. Um I know you and I have had some chats in the past about things, and you've really sort of cleared my mind of a few things and shared with me some of your experiences when it came to spirit communication. And um, I was wondering if you could tell us in so many words, what, share an experience that, you know, in spirit communication that will stay with you the rest of your life. Well, I've, I've had a lot of personal ones, uh, ones that have actually um, had my family in it, uh, a lot of investigations that we've done. Uh, I've used uh, the dowsing rods in order to uh, communicate with spirit. And uh, every time I do have one of these very interesting communications, um, personally being uh, empathic, very empathic, and being a psychic, I have to always ask the spirits, um, when we're done with the session, to stay where they are and, and not follow me because they have a tendency, um, especially at night when I'm trying to sleep, <laughs> they have a tendency to want to keep talking and keep asking questions and keep telling me things. So um, with my family, uh, when my mother uh, actually uh, passed, uh, we were all there at, at her funeral and they were getting ready to put her into um, her, the tomb that they had, we had seven blue balloons that seven was her favorite number and blue was her favorite color. And we released the balloons um, when the, the service was over. And you can ask Chris about this. It was amazing. The balloons went up into the air in the shape of a heart. And two of the balloons 
my father had passed before, two of the balloons went off on their own. And we all stood and we looked at each other and we said, that's, that's definitely communication from the other side. Well, you know, it's, it's interesting. <clears throat> when you talk to someone such as yourself, you're so attuned to signs. You know, I mean, uh-huh. me, I would have saw that and I would have thought nothing of it. But you're so oh. attuned to, and we've had this discussion before about, you know, you've told me when my father passed uh, back in right. 2018. You always told me to, you kind of comforted me, and you basically always told me that there were certain signs that I would see. And I may not notice them, but there are signs. And I tried tried to look for things. I haven't seen it yet, but I do truly believe Mm -hmm. that there is something there. I just haven't seen it yet. And when the time is right, I will see it. Absolutely, and and don't try too hard. <laughs> that's that's the other key to it is is don't try too hard. Try to be very relaxed about it because it will come, and you you will know it, you will feel it, and it will make sense to you. But I have so many clients that I read for that I've tried and I've tried and I've tried so hard, and I just think just relax. It'll come when it's supposed to come, and they'll get back with me and say you were right. I just relaxed and let it happen. Hmm, and that's interesting because, because I do try. I do try to look very hard for something and try to find yeah. meaning and stuff. And then I just eventually stop. I'm like, you know what? I mean, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen, and it's going to do the way it's going to be. And and, and it, who knows? Maybe I'll be sleeping. Maybe it'll happen a moment that I'm just not paying attention. So I'm just not going to, you know, focus on it so much. Right. Um, right. What, just relax. Well, one of the th- other things that you've done a lot that I've noticed and I've witnessed and still to this day amazes me is your skill with tarot cards. Ah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I have been doing it a very long time. In fact, it was my great aunt who really got me interested in, in the cards and reading the cards. And kind of a funny side note to it is in the 1920s here in uh, Denver, uh, my great aunt and her husband were bootleggers. Wow. (laughs) And she would read the cards in order to see when to send the truck to the speakeasy so they would never get caught. And she was very good, and and, uh, they never went to jail. So uh, her reading was quite good. Well, luck luck was definitely on their side. But do you remember, you, you drew some cards for me. it has been several occasions that we did this together when we were touring right. or at conventions. What card did I always draw? It was always something to do with money, the coin card or pinnacle <laughs> card. Always, always money. Every time I read for you, it always comes, how, it has to be. How is that possible? I mean, I even took the deck of cards, and I, I basically shuffled them all up, and I laid them out on the table, and you just stood right. there, and you're like, pick whatever card you want. And I did. And every right. freaking time, I got that same card. And then and then because I had D. D did it reading for me also. Yes. With her yes. deck of cards, and the same thing happened. Yes. What do you make of it's, that? It's, I mean, how do I explain that? Well, it's, you, you attract money. Money is all around you. Money is in your aura. Um, it's it's your me, boys. tenacity. <laughs> it's your tenacity to work. Oh, to wow. make money. Well, thank you. I appreciate so, that. <laughs> I appreciate that. But that that always, to this day, I always share this story in circles, and I, I tell everybody about you and the experience of the tarot cards. And Pete, you're freaking me out. Uh-huh. I'm trying to um, get some energy. So, you, right? But that's always been an interesting thing. And, um, uh-huh. you know, I know that you have a, you actually have a pretty big following here in upstate New York. And I think we talked about oh. this before. Um, we have. Now, you're on the show, what is the name of your show? Spirited Chat with Mama Moon. And that's on Paranormal Warehouse. Paranormal Warehouse on uh, Monday at 9.30 Eastern, and we- or 9 o'clock Eastern, I'm sorry, and Wednesday at 9.30 Eastern. I mm-hmm. love that show. And you're getting some serious following. You're like 75, what, 7,500, 10,000 people following you? Yes. Wow. Yes, I really, I really appreciate that too. I'm very blessed. I try and watch it every Monday when I can. Ah, thank you, thank yeah. you. We love to have everybody, you know, come and be a part of it, and I feel like we're one big happy family. Now, I know, I know you've done some readings for people because I've witnessed some of your readings. That I mean, not even tarot card stuff. When you're 
talking mm-hmm. to people, reading their palms and, and reading their energy and things like that. And I know you've, yeah. you've, I, know, I mean this in the best way possible. You've made a couple of women cry. Now, at first I'm like, oh yeah. my God, what is she telling these poor people? You know, <laughs> well, you, you might as well hang it up. You're not going to make it through Saturday. You know, so, <laughs> and um, but then then they would be so happy and hugging you after. I'm like, okay, this is weird emotion. They're bawling their eyes out, and then they're super happy and kissing you and saying they love you. And I'm like, yes. what did she say to these people? How did you get that kind of effect on a person? And it must well, be that you tuned into something that only yes. they knew. Yes, yes. Um, Dennis gets mad at me because <laughs> <laughs> I read people, I mean, even strangers, and, and I will turn to him and I'll tell him something like, oh, boy, she's got to really make a big decision. It's coming up. She's really nervous about it, but I think she'll be okay. And he, and he don't say anything. Don't say anything. But it's it's something that, that comes to me, Rich. I can't. I can't explain it. I I just am the messenger. I, I get a message. I get something that they need, be it guidance, direction, um, being a mother and a grandmother, uh, the empathy I feel for them, and I can see when they're hurting, and I try to open that up, and I try to let them get it out, and that's where the tears come, and it's out there. They know what to do now. They feel relief, and that's kind of my purpose. Wow, that's amazing. <clears throat> and and guys, I've witnessed, I mean, I've seen yeah. the impact she's yeah. had on people. Now, here's a question for you. Um, <clears throat> earlier in the conversation, you talked about how you go home and <laughs> try, try to go to sleep and they're still trying to talk to you and all that kind of stuff and you have to tune them out. Have you ever had something mm-hmm. follow you home? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I've, I've had that, yeah, on, on numerous occasions and um, I've actually, we've, we've had to, on several occasions, actually do a house clearing where there is an entity that just can't let go of me because they they need to get a message across or they need me to do something or help them in some way. But it becomes that they're really possessive of me, and we've had to do house clearing. I, I would say here at this house, and you, you've been here at this house, so mm-hmm. you know um, that it has some some interesting spirits that wander through from time to time. But we've had to sage the house before. Uh, we've also had to put sea salt at the front door, the back door, and the garage door um, to keep the entities out because they become so overwhelming and they become so possessive of me that I can't get anything else done. I can't sleep. I can't eat. I've, I've got to cut it off. And, and after each time, uh, after I do a show on Monday and Wednesday night, I have to ask, the spirits to please stay where they are and not to come with me, not to try to get any other messages across because I have to cut it off. And not that I, I want to be mean. I just have to cut it off or, or I can't exist. Why is it, do you think that they want to, to, to like be like connected to you and constantly talk to you and get your attention? Why do you think that is? I think that they know that somehow I don't know how I can't explain it, but they know somehow that I can connect to both sides, that I can hear them and understand them, and that I can get the messages across to the to their loved ones, their friends, um, people that need to to get messages. I have a lot of people call in about um, a friend or a relative that supposedly had committed suicide, but was it really that, or were they re- really in fact murdered and I, I don't know why I've got this ability. I know I come from a long line of, of psychics, empaths, uh, clairvoyance. I know all the members of my family, women especially in my family, have all had some sort of ability. In fact, Chris is the only male in our family that has this psychic ability. He's the only one. But I feel like they can connect to me. They know I can get the message out. And, again, I'm just the messenger. Hmm, That's interesting. It sounds like the spirits want to talk to the living just as much as the living wants to talk to the spirits. Exactly, exactly. There, There are messages that they need to get through that they couldn't give at the time they were here on Earth. A lot of times in most of the readings that I do, uh, one of the first things they always say is, I love you, I miss you. Every time I hear that, 
Um, they just want something to, to be left of them. They want me to get a message that, you know, I'm, I'm going to be around them. I don't want to frighten them, but I'm going to be around them um, when they're in a difficult time. Or, or sometimes I'll get messages like, yes, I'm in the car with them, and they're not paying attention, and you've got to get the message to You've got to pay more attention driving. Or even, I hate the radio station they're listening to. Tell them to turn that off. <laughs> so it's, it's just kind of unusual. So our spirits, if someone was mean and grumpy in life, do they take that whole persona with them in death when they're in the spirit world? Absolutely. Interesting. The way they are here, the way they are there. It's, it's, the only thing that's different is, is how they perceive things. It's different that way, how they perceive heaven, how they've learned once they've passed over, in which a lot of them tell me that, please tell my mother, my grandmother, whether I've passed over, I'm not an earthbound spirit. Please tell them I've passed over. But they always say, when they've had arguments or whatever, that it doesn't matter on the other side. All is forgiven. Everything is the way it's supposed to be. But they're still, if they're grumpy, they're still grumpy. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, ex- that explains a lot. So what, what is the other side, Paulette? What, what is it? I mean, as paranormal investigators, we try to find mm-hmm. answers to why people are, like, doing a haunting. You know, why are they there? What do they want? And <clears throat> if there's something we think or perceive as evil, why is it here? What's its end game? What happens when when someone dies in their spirit, their soul, whatever you want, leaves their body, where do they go? Mm -hmm. Where is this place? Where does it go? Well, that's a a very interesting question. And what we found in in all of our research and all of our investigations is that there are, and we've talked about this before, what we call earthbound spirits. And the earthbound spirits kind of keep themselves in the purgatory because they're afraid to go to the light. They're afraid to cross over to whatever the other side is for them, and they fear it, and they stay locked in. And this is why Chris and I have tried to help these spirits, these earthbound spirits, to move to the light because from what we understand or what we feel, this place that you want to call the universe, heaven, whatever name, terminology you have for it, that this place is so beautiful, is so peaceful, but everybody has a job there. It's not like you just sit around all day and look at the clouds. Everybody still has a job, and a lot of people, their job is to reincarnate and come back. So it's an interesting place. It's it's kind of like a a clearinghouse of souls. But the most important thing that I've found over and over again is when our beloved pets pass, we always meet them there. They wait for us in the light. That's what I wanted to hear because I'm a huge pet person. As you know, I've always shared many pictures of my dogs. As a matter of fact, my my youngest dog, Jasper, was named after your son. So he, he gave me the name. Oh, he was like, I went on Facebook. Right. I went on Facebook and I wanted to give this little five pound dog a killer name like, you know, Thor, yes. Axel, you know, Satan, you know, <laughs> something like that. And my wife yes. goes, oh, it's stupid. So I went to Facebook and said, I need a name for this dog. And all these really cool names came across. You know, Chalupa, uh-huh. I thought was cute, cool. <laughs> Ren, uh, our buddy Larry Grady uh-huh. gave me that one. And then Chris came with Jasper. And that one just stuck with me for some reason. I'm like, Jasper. Perfect. And now when I look at Perfect. him, he is Jasper. He couldn't be anything but Jasper. And then, Perfect. you know, when I lose a pet, I mean, it kills me. It breaks my, I mean, oh. I'm just a mess. And, you yeah. know, and I always wish that someday that I would see them again. You know, and you basically, will. and then just basically be with them all the time. So, mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. are people really scared of, of, I mean, are they really scared of dying? Or are they just scared of the pain and everything they have to go through to get there? And, or are they scared of, of, of missing people and, and having all their stuff? You know, we all of us have stuff and without our stuff, right. you know, I mean, right. I mean, I, I wonder sometimes really why people... I mean, why when somebody passes and moves on, why are we not rejoicing? Because I know some cultures probably do that. They honor that right. person, rejoice that they've moved on to the next level, if you will. Sounds like you're going to be ris- missing your money, Rich. 
<laughs> yes. Yeah, we're going to throw a few coins in with you when you go, Rich. Yeah, thanks, so Paulette. I, I appreciate that. She's always looking out for me. <laughs> this one, <laughs> always looking out for me. You know, it's interesting because I, I asked some people in the paranormal community that I highly respect, and I said, hey, I go, you know, Paulette, I think, has got, she's very, very gifted. I mean, the things that I witness, I just can't explain. And I remember these, <laughs> these two gentlemen, and I won't say their names, and they're like, oh, that woman's got some serious skills, some serious gifts. I mean, she's, she's legit. I'm like, yeah. cool. That's, that's good to hear. That's very well, reaffirming. Thank you. I, I appreciate it. I never questioned what you could do. I never doubted it for a second. <laughs> I just wanted to see what these other two people, where they sat on the whole uh -huh. phenomenon of, of psychics and stuff. Um, <clears throat> right. You know, as a paranormal group, we're open to the, the idea of it. We want to explore it more. And we want to somehow right. find how s the scientific method and the metaphysical method mm -hmm. can somehow c be collaborated or somehow agree on something. And that's really kind of one of the things that we've been playing exactly. around with. Because, yeah. um, mm -hmm. I mean, I think it's fascinating. And, you know, my experiences with you and with Chris and uh, a few others on a smaller level have really opened my eyes to all this. And I think now that I've been doing this for so long... I, don't, I think one of the things, and I don't know if you guys agree with me or not here, um, I don't know if I feared death as much as I did before I was a paranormal investigator. Well, you know, something interesting, I was reading something. Do you know who Errol Flynn is? Errol the Flynn? The old time of oh, Errol yeah, yeah, he was uh, Robin Hood or something like that, right? Uh, yeah, he, he used to say that easy, that dying was always easy. And I always thought, how, how could it be easy? But after some of the experiences I've had with investigations, I think, I think the dying part is, is the easy part. Passing is the easy part. What happens on the other side, that's still quite a, a mystery to us. But I think that um, there's really nothing to fear, again, but fear itself of, of dying. I think that when the number's called, when the time comes, I believe that there is a, a plan in the universe where everybody has this time that's already been marked out, and the way that they're going to pass will come, and it can come suddenly, it can be through a long and unfortunately miserable kind of survival, but I don't think that part is going to be the hardest. I think it will be easy, and once we pass and once we go through the light, it will all be explained to us. Interesting. Yeah, you guys it, have any questions? It really seems like, you know, it, it's something to look forward to, is you're seeing all these people that meant so much in your life, even your pets that mean so much to you in your, in your life. Right. But at the same right. time, you got to live your life now so that you can be that for somebody else later on. Absolutely. That's the main thing is that we have to make each day and each day have a purpose and do something, especially if you can do something to help somebody else. Any questions, Peter? That's interesting. No, That's <laughs> thank you. I mean, it's wow. That was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Yeah, that's um, that's a conversation. I would love to sit down with you when I see you in Denver, over a couple of uh, Jack and Cokes, and have a okay. long, long talk about that. Because I, mean, I think I think it gives people closure to certain things. You know, I mean, knowing that it's going to be okay at some point. Right. It's going to be okay. You just right. got to believe that it's going to be okay. So that's right. Exactly. So. Well, thank you, Paulette. I really appreciate you spending some time with us on Sunday night. And uh, everyone out there watching the show or is about to start watching the show, please watch Paulette Moon on the Paranormal Warehouse. And what are the times again, Paulette? Again, Monday is 9 o'clock Eastern. Wednesday is 9.30 on the Paranormal Warehouse. Wow, that's the bomb. Love that show. Well, thank you so yeah. much. You have yourself a beautiful Sunday night, and we will talk to you again. <clears throat> Okay, thank you so much for having me on. Thank you, Mama. Thank Our you. Our pleasure. Sure. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And that is a wonderful show. Yes. Uh, I try not to miss it every Monday. I some, love watching her. Some of the comments people yep. ask you, it's just heartbreaking. Like, yes. But the things people want answers to. So how It's amazing how it's like always the same. It's like every time you watch her, it's always the same people. So people just keep watching <clears> her over and over, and it's just... She's amazing every time. You know, and, and there's some, I mean, like anything, there's good and there's bad in any field. 
and you have very legitimate psychic mediums like Paulette that are doing a service. It's almost like a therapeutic service. And then you've got these hacks out there that do their thing and, you know, tell you whatever they want. You know, like, uh, you know, you have an uncle named Fred. No, Frank. No. I'm, I'm seeing something with an A, yes. a B, a C, a D, me $50, an e. $50,000 and I'm going to crack a chicken egg and yeah. bury it in the sand. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Now, the thing is with her is, I mean, she has a lot of, of clients and she is legit. I mean, they're telling, I'm telling you the woman is legit. But the thing is that some people say like, well, you know, she does psychic readings for people, you know, privately and stuff. And, of course, she charges for that. It's a service that she provides. And some people are like um, one person that we know in particular was basically, you know, well, that that's, you know, they're taking advantage of them, this and that and the other thing. And I'm like, it's like a therapeutic thing. Mm -hmm. It's like if someone gave you, let's put it this way, if somebody gave you a pill and said this would cause your headache and you took the pill and said my headache's gone, it's the best thing. And then you found out it was like a sugar pill. What's the difference? It worked, you know, yeah. and and that's and then basically, except with her, it's legit. I mean, everything she tells you. I mean, she doesn't play that cold reading kind of thing where she's like feeling you out. You know, yeah. there's someone in the audience that lost their father last year. Well, yeah. chances are that's going to happen. I mean, if you're at the Stanley Theater and there's a thousand, two thousand people in there, that's a chance of someone you know that happened to. So, and that's what I really like about her. She's totally legit, and so many people follow her. And in when you're doing, when she's doing a reading for you, you can't help but just feel happy. You know, she just got that like it transitions to you. So, thank you. Can we that. can we expand that just for a second? Again, the yeah. first show we want to lay all the groundwork. <laughs> if you've ever been to a psychic show or psychic fair, you're going to see people walking around with thousands of dollars in their hand. And you think it's just absurd. Like, they're, they're ready to slap this thing. I mean, they're buying a rock. They're doing the Pe People ground themselves in what they, they call their own reality, and they expect everyone else to operate in their own metric. You get sick, you go to a doctor. You got mental problems, you go talk to a psychiatrist. But they don't understand that in a certain realm of people, or a certain realm, people believe in not so much as even like the psychic part of the business yes like richard mentioned there's a lot of scam artists out there but those people need to sit down with someone who they believe has authority like mama moon for example or chris yep. they tell them their problem and they give them a solution so they're affirming and they're they're sending the person along with in many cases they're basically just telling them what they want to hear well a lot of people think that that's a disservice or that's fraud and they shouldn't charge for that it's no different than going to a medical doctor. Like you're saying, they give you pills. Okay, the pill's going to make you better. <clears throat> the pill only treats part of the problem. Your mind actually makes you better. And that's what metaphysics is starting to prove, that your mind actually is what's healing you, not the pill. I mean, in certain circumstances, it is the meta, But the recovery part of it is your mind. So you can't really lump every psychic or whatever you want to call it into this big basket of disbelief. Yeah. A lot of them do have a gift. The first time I ever met her, she came up and said something to me, and I'm like, how the hell do you know that? Like, I never mentioned it to Chris, never mentioned it to you guys. It's a... So, I mean, she does, she, she's one of the few, I would say, yes, but oh. not, not to piggyback, but that's what I mean. It, you, you can't discredit this, this field. It does help people who need help yes, definitely. from that sense. I and mean, I had the pleasure of meeting both of them at Rucker when they did an event there a couple years ago. And just a couple hours spending with them has made you know a total difference and i've been following them ever since because you can just tell by their personality and just who they are that they're genuine yeah no i, I agree you know? they and that's why i've been working with them and following them for so long because they are they are genuine and the other aspect to that is people who are going to these fairs or people seeking people out like that or what they call awoken so they're actually operating on a different level they're not into that daily grind of what society deems life to be. So they want answers to something far more profound. Yeah. Like you, you were just asking with her pretty much the lifelong question. What is life? Who am I? Yeah. What is my purpose? Well, you're here for a reason. You don't know what the reason is because one of the beliefs in metaphysics is that you sign a contract before you incarnate called the veil of forgetfulness. You don't know anything you've learned prior to this. But what you need to understand is that you have already existed. 
you are existing, and you always will exist. Earth is considered like the Ivy League of, of manifestation. This, this realm has the hardest problems to overcome. And that's why they put such a deep level of forgetfulness on you. And I think that's the fear, like she's talking about people trapped in the light. Yeah. They're still clinging on to that part of humanity that not understanding once they go into the light, they're going to realize they either accomplished what they were sent here to learn, or you didn't, and you come back at another time. Or maybe they, they're scared they'll be judged on something that they did. You know, they committed a crime or something that uh, <clears throat> they feel that they'll be judged you know, heavily upon. So they don't. So, Like she said, sometimes it's just someone needing to get a message out mm -hmm. just to do that message. And once that message gets out, right. then they feel like they're free to be able to move on. Oh. Speaking of bootlegging, <laughs> brewed in wonderful Utica, New York, is Utica <laughs> Club. This was the first beer distributed in the United States after prohibition was repealed. Yes. If I didn't have diabetes and if I wasn't on 34 pills, I would have actually drunk this because <laughs> this is one of the great beers of all time. Two talking steins do not lie to you. Schultz and Dooley say it's the best. So and, do I. And they are right. Utica Club. Maybe on the next episode, Pete will down one and we can just see what happens. <laughs> you might want to get Mama Moon then to talk to me. <laughs> He'll down one and then Pete will down. Yeah. Well, yes. well to, we'll finish up, to finish up tonight's show about... Um, <clears throat> Utica Club. <laughs> no. Brewed by the Saranac Brewery. So to finish up about spirit communication, I just happen to have about a half a dozen or more actual EVPs that we captured while in the field. So let me just give you a disclaimer real quick. This is stuff that we picked up, okay? Um, we're not saying that this is a ghost. We're not saying this is a spirit. Some of these are answers to questions, and some of them are disembodied voices. We just thought they're very interesting and unique, and it just adds a little bit of this hmm factor, like is there something going on? So I'm going to give you guys a quick little dis, uh, disclaimer, not disclaimer, I'm sorry, a quick little explanation of what this is, and then I'm going to play it for you, okay? Let's go with this. So, <clears throat> here's one that we got from the shops in Utica, the shops at the finish line, and you're going to hear me ask a question, who is the president, and you're going to hear a very quick response. Let's play this. Who is the president? <laughs> Okay, coincidence, quisit, co co I'm taking less. Winky dink. dink. <laughs> coincidence or not, I asked who is the president, and it answered immediately and said Nixon. Oh, so, you know, could it be a radio station that just, I mean, just that exact moment in time and space, right, it happened. Let me play it for you one more time. Who is the president? Nixon. Now, if you've ever heard Richard Nixon's voice, I mean, I, I, you know, maybe he's on YouTube, I don't know. Yeah, that uh, actually kind of sounds like him. What do you guys think? You know, he's actually yeah. he shares Leonard Blood. Oh, that explains a lot. <laughs> <laughs> we have the same ear. Same ear. The Leonard ear. Well, that explains your get rich schemes. Yes. <laughs> get, get, get rich, rich slow schemes. Yeah. Slow. <laughs> I'm slow. I have a whole, a whole incarnation, so don't rush me. <laughs> All right, let me play another one here for you guys. Um, <clears throat> this is one um, that we talked about spirit guides before with Chris. And um, we started doing EVP sessions where we ask for a spirit guide. And uh, as we start our communication, I'm looking through my thing here to find this. Where is it? Yes. It's a button. Yes, I know. If you choose, choose wisely. <laughs> here we go. Ready? Is there a spirit guide that we can please speak with? I'm looking for a spirit guide, spirit technician. What is your name? So upon the second asking, a voice came through and said, me. 
Did you I hear heard that? It. Me. Okay. I heard it. Me. Just making sure it's just not me. <laughs> Did you guys hear that? What? Oh. Uh, uh, <laughs> that always fascinates me, expecting they're going to say their name like Charlie. Is there anyone here to talk with? Me. Yeah, me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> that was profound. <laughs> now, here's one getting a little nasty with me. This is another one we took at a, at a local place. I don't know if it's saying bitch or rich. Let me play this one for you. Are you hiding from somebody? <laughs> Now, Actually, there was a no at the beginning. Yeah, there was a couple um, other little voices. Yeah. I could have sworn I said bitch, and also before that, too, like like kind of like low. Let me play that again. Gotta find it. Are you hiding from somebody? Now, it's not unusual for them to swear at you because, you know, we've been there. We've had some real good ones drop with me. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I did hear what you're saying, but I also heard that it could have been saying rich. Right, right. And, and I've listened to it over and over again, and I, I've been weighing toward bitch over rich. Uh, at least that's how I hear it. Yeah. And obviously you hear it a little bit differently, so it's it's either or. Obviously, it sounds like it's coming from, through the spirit box. Yeah. It's an le- electronic sound. So, so it, it's a very difficult thing for everyone that's listening in. A spirit box without uh, all the portal accessories added to it, it, it really makes it pretty difficult to hear. And we really have to pick and choose what we're actually going to show as findings. So, Oh, absolutely. I've got tons of these where I think it's something, but it's not enough. So let me play another one here for you. Um, if any of you ever gone in a, in a paranormal investigation with Peter, Peter's a very popular guy in the spirit world, by the way. So whenever you turn a spirit box on, you're going to hear it. Peter, Peter, you're going to hear it. I, and I hear it every single time almost I turn it on. I hear Peter, especially when, when you walk in the room, Peter. So let me play this one for you. You tell me <clears throat> if you hear this or not. That came out of the box, yep. or it's almost an electronic beat or like a robotic type of thing. Yeah. No, was was that the spirit box you said? Or? That was the spirit box going. Okay. Yeah, we heard that. So it wasn't we got that off the audio recorder afterwards? We heard that. Obviously, he answered. Now nobody else will verify this other than what I'm about to tell you. But I told Rich, but that's actually my dad's voice. Perfect tone. <laughs> Here's another one I'm going to play for you. This is there's no this isn't a spirit box thing. This is someone yelling my name, and someone heard it and said, "Someone just call Rich." Now the investigation there was three of us. There was only one female that was in the group, and this almost sounds like a female voice yelling my name out. So let me play this for you. Do people pass in and out of this building that scare you? So did you hear at the beginning someone yell my name? It was, I think you were talking over the top and you could just faintly hear it behind it. Yeah, that was weird. We yeah. just, I, I didn't even hear it. I came up and said, no, somebody yelled my name? To, to Jen was the investigator. She goes, yeah, somebody just yelled your name. A female, there was, there was no one there. We were, the doors were locked so you couldn't get into the place because that was one of the, the protocols that we had a lock the doors so no one could walk around because they had businesses in there and you know you didn't want anything to be taken so all right let me take play another one here for we're getting close to to wrapping this up for the night so let's find a good one here that we have i have soon yeah, we're, we're almost done with the hour <laughs> <laughs> we knew we were going to go over we yeah knew we we're going to go over we we're a little excited for the first episode so. <laughs> yes here let's play this one Please touch the black box that's on the table that has a silver rod sticking out of it. Can you just go ahead and touch that? No! Touch it. 
to find it. You touch that, all the lights will light up. Now, there was a lot of static noise going on there, but you could hear someone say, stop. A voice came out and yelled over the top of it, which I would have done the same thing with that annoying <laughs> static noise. So, so yeah. So, anything, got anyone, else, anyone else have anything they want to share tonight? We move on here. Utica Club, a beer so good, <laughs> it's trying to get out of the can and get into your mouth. So, why not oblige it and go buy yourself a case? So, ladies and gentlemen, that is our show for And after tonight. you've had quite a few, you want to get yourself down to Utica Brews. Brews. And get yourself some Agent Paranormal Coffee. That would be, yeah, well, whatever. Maybe. Utica Brews is not oh. there anymore, dude. What is that flashing over here? Oh, Utica, what does that say? Utica Coffee. Oh. Shh. <laughs> get down to Utica Coffee. <laughs> Go see Heather at Utica Coffee. She's the greatest, man. I'm telling you, she's the greatest. We've investigated Utica Bruce. My bad. My bad. He's bad. He's always going to be bad. So, folks, that is our show for tonight. Thank you for spending your Sunday night with us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hopefully you come back for another one. Hopefully hopefully Todd will have us back. He's been pacing back and forth. (laughs) Killing it it or killing him? Killing it. Well, it, it, that's better than him pacing back and forth and with a rope around his neck ready to jump off the thing. <laughs> Why did I put these guys on? <laughs> so we want to thank uh, Disruption Networks for giving us the opportunity to do our show tonight. And, uh, you know, moving forward, we want to do more of these for you. So stay tuned with uh, the next episode if they'll have us back. Um, so please, Pete, don't do anything in the bathroom to, so we <laughs> so our invitation gets rescinded. <laughs> Too late. Uh-oh. Oh. That's not a good sign. No, well, he, it was a great show. Thank you. <laughs> he already promised that he wouldn't summon everything. So, <laughs> so on oh. behalf of myself, the Ohm guy, Peter, oh. Chris, and Kevin, who are awesome, by the way, oh. thank you for spending your Sunday night with us, and stay tuned for more shows. Have a wonderful, wonderful evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You. Peace. Thank you.